Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so good evening. I welcome you to this first live discussion session of the course titled uh, Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So, as this is uh, the first live discussion session, I think we have covered uh, two modules. Uh, so, if you have any questions on these modules uh, from the lecture content, if you have not understood anything, uh, you can ask. So, we'll try to addressed address whatever issues or concerns you have okay so you can start asking questions and uh, i will take take as you ask questions so you can write your post here <clears throat> Okay, so in the meantime, uh, uh, probably I will uh, just take few questions that are already asked in the Google Sheet. So one question was asked uh, by Margarita. Uh, the question is, what is the importance of psychology nowadays? So. Again, this is a very, you know, I cannot just give you a very uh, brief answer to this question, you know. So, psychology, since it is uh, it is the study of human behavior, scientific study of human behavior and mental processes, uh, it has diverse application in terms of, because human behavior is involved in every aspect that we do. So, psychology as a discipline has its application in all diverse aspects. Based on this, uh, you know, diverse area, psychology as a discipline has been divided into different, you know, sub-disciplines as we have already discussed in the first lecture, you know, uh, such as, you know, uh, clinical psychology, we have organizational behavior, social psychology, so many uh, disciplines are there, sub-disciplines are there within the discipline. So the idea of all this uh, is that, you know, uh, that uh, the, the, uh, this uh, basic sub-disciplines are basically focused on applying the principles of psychology into diverse areas for example clinical psychology talks about you know understanding human behavior particularly psychological disorders and how to treat those disorders and the focus is more assessment treatment diagnosis all these kinds of uh, uh, you know and uh, focus is given on these areas and clinical psychology has been contributing to helping people coming out of psychological disorder you know um, in the last uh, you know from almost you know from uh, this in the beginning of this century and it has evolved really you know and it has contributed a lot so just like other areas such as organizational behavior where you know psychology the principles are applied into uh, organizational context corporate sectors and they talk about uh, the principles of leadership motivation and so on uh, like that, you know, we have social psychology that uh, tries to look at uh, how to apply psychology in the social settings and understand social behavior. So, like that, you know, there are diverse areas and diverse applications. Um, so, I cannot give you a very, you know, simple uh, one or two sentence answer to this. Uh, so, there are diverse applications. Uh, 
Okay, so now I am getting some few questions. So Meshram said, what do you actually mean by static and dynamic response in terms of stress? Um, I'm not sure in what context you are asking this question. Uh, I have not used these two terms in the context of stress, you know, uh, but uh, probably you are asking, what you are asking, it is not very clear in your questions. Dynamic and static response. You know, if you are a little bit more clear what you were trying to say, probably I will be able to answer it better. So Aryan said, uh, Namaskar sir, thank you for your wonderful course. Sometimes it's lengthy, but thank you for NPD initially. Yeah, I can understand because most of these lectures are one hour lecture and uh, probably, you know, attending them in the YouTube session could be a little bit cumbersome. Uh, but what to do? Probably you can increase the speed in the YouTube setting and uh, probably it will help you. Arijit said how you stress is beneficial. See, uh, as we have already discussed, uh, stress can have both positive aspect, negative aspects. And uh, <clears throat> when we use the word you stress, we are specifically the idea of you stress is that, you know, certain states, stressful experiences are actually good for us. Not all the stress are bad. Uh, you stress when we say we're talking about stress such as uh, you know, certain challenging situation for example you know, which will help you out to kind of push your limits to do better you know so let's say you know you are you know kind of you know you have certain skills in your let's say in your academics uh, you are taking a particular course or particular area of study uh, so probably you know you need to initially in order to enhance your skills you need to kind of stress yourself you know sometimes it could be stressful but still it will help you to grow grow and promote your skills and understanding so in that sense a little bit of stress is good because it will motivate you to do better in your life so those kind of stress are actually called as eustress so the word eustress itself means it is a beneficial uh, stress i hope this will uh, help answer your query Uh, Aryan said, uh, sir, this course gives us techniques and how can we know and learn psychotherapy and uh, how can we have diploma distance practice, diploma distance to practice, is there any certificate course? Uh, Aryan, this is not a uh, psychotherapy course as such, uh, but certain psychotherapy techniques will be discussed in this course, particularly in the coping section that we, that we kind of discuss, you know there will be whole module on coping there will discuss some basic principles of psychotherapies particularly how uh, you know how can we kind of you know uh, manipulate our thought processes using certain techniques and uh, certain ideas so there are certain principles of psychotherapy will discuss throughout this course but this itself is not a uh, psychotherapy course or a counseling kind of course that you will be certified to practice as a counselor so this is not the idea of this course uh, this course the basic idea is it will talk about how stressful experiences uh, you know how we experience stress and how can we deal with those stressful experiences and how can we go even beyond those in terms of promotion of mental health and well-being uh, so this is uh, idea is that you know mostly we'll talk about applied aspects and how can you use all these things in our life but i don't think that this is a kind of counseling course or psychotherapy course that after getting certificate of this course, you will be able to practice and something like that. So that is not the idea. Counseling and psychotherapy, they need, you know, diploma kind of separate courses where, you know, you need separate kind of content and uh, just one course is not good enough. Uh, Pavitra said, is it possible to make career in clinical psychology without having bachelors in the subject with only masters and MPhil and PhD in the discipline? <clears throat> now clinical psychology obviously uh, uh, even if you don't have a bachelor degree in psychology uh, many institutes provide you know or give you at least opportunity that or eligibility uh, to get admission into master's program 
and clinical psychology uh, uh, so there are many uh, sometimes masters programs in clinical psychology there are mphil programs and phd programs so there are two aspects one is obviously academic uh, study where you know you study clinical psychology as a academic disciplines and another aspects of clinical psychology is that you know you practice as a clinical psychologist for practicing you need uh, different kinds of orientation and courses there are some institutes in india they give certificates uh, in terms of and uh, orient you and uh, not train you for practicing for example nimhans cip rachi uh, there is an another institute in delhi called ebas then uh, there is one institute in uh, no mental health institute in uh, tejpur assam so like that there are certain uh, institutes which which are affiliated to hospitals also where you will be practically trained to deal uh, diagnose people with mental disorders and treat them uh, so if you want to practice as a clinical psychologist it is always advisable that you try to you know apply to those those institutes after your masters program and they will have you know and uh, you can get admitted to mphil program and phd program to get you know certified as a clinical psychologist but you can do research in clinical psychology without really becoming a clinical psychologist as a practitioner that is also possible uh juhita says sir can we do masters in psychology after b pharm it is possible again it depends on the institution some institutes uh, most of the institute i guess uh, you know they allow people from other disciplines particularly if they are from the science background it is allowed uh, but some institute uh, may not allow i am not sure about all institutes but generally from the people with the science background uh, they can apply for uh, masters in uh, psychology also uh, so you need to see at uh, which institute you are talk, uh, no, looking at and uh, what are their eligibility criteria but most of the institute i guess if you have a masters uh, master degree in the graduation you uh, sorry uh, if you uh, if you have science degree in the graduation you can be eligible for a masters degree in uh, psychology so you need to check out the eligibility criteria because people you know things also change keep on changing also i myself uh, i did my bsc in uh, chemistry after that i went to psychology in the masters program Uh, so i did my bsc if, so i did it from the aligarh muslim university so there it was allowed so i guess some universities also allow that i am not sure about all the universities <clears throat> uh sri sai choudhury uh right sir what are the objectives of this course uh sri sai i mean uh, in the first lecture i have in a elaborate way i discuss what are the objectives and what are the things that you need to expect please uh, go through the first lecture where i have you know given an overview of this course what are the things what are the questions that will be addressed so the title itself is psychology of stress health and well being so basically we'll try to see how human being experiences stress what are the psychological principles behind it how can we add, deal with the stress what are the relationship between mind and body and body you know how can stress causes physical disease mental disorders uh, and we will we'll also talk about you know the, the different aspects of mental health and well being happiness so many ideas so lecture 1 kindly look into the lecture 1 i have elaborately discussed about the objectives of this course in the lecture 1 uh musical mocktail sir he is writing sir i am a mechanical engineer in ug i wish to do masters in psychology from iit please share procedure and eligibility uh, as far as i know uh, iits don't have a masters program in psychology as such um, as of now we don't have any specific masters program in psychology itself but all iits have phd program in psychology Uh, some iits have uh, masters program in other disciplines such as you no know, our iit guwahati has a masters program in development studies uh, there it is not about psychology as such but it is more about you know uh, other issues related to the development of countries and other things uh, so 
as of now as far as i know no other iits have masters program in psychology itself but you can do masters program from various universities including government universities and private universities iits have phd program in psychology I hope this will clear your doubt. Jyoti uh, says, Namaste sir, can, thank you for your wonderful session. Can we get videos or PDF notes in Marathi and Hindi language? As of now, we don't have other language uh, translation, uh, but I, am, I think IIT Madras is working on that. They will have translations of videos into different languages. So once that will come, so, so there will be kind of, you know, uh, subtitles in other languages also. I'm sure this will come, but I'm not sure when it will come. Uh, but it will be there in other languages also. Uh, musical Mocktail again, he writes, I mean, I don't know what is your actual name. Psychology has more scope in abroad than in India. Um, I don't know exactly uh, in terms of scope, it depends on uh, what, what you are trying to uh, pursue. But obviously in abroad, you know, um, you will find uh, almost uh, all universities have psychology programs and uh, more funding in terms of, you know, almost all you know, uh, universities, all the best universities, they will have psychology program. So in that sense, probably, you know, you will get more exposure there and, uh, and also it is more, you know, awareness about psychology is much more there in the abroad. So, and almost every universities will have psychology program. In India, you may not find psychology in all the all the universities, you know. So still, in terms of awareness, in terms of you know spread and uh, reach of the course is much more in the abroad, especially in some Western countries. Uh, so in that sense, obviously, there is a benefit there. Uh, Arijit says, what is the difference between stress and anxiety? Uh, uh, I have also discussed about this uh, issue in the uh, one of the lecture, I think lecture two, or second lecture or third lecture somewhere I have discussed this difference. So idea is stress is mostly happens as a, in the context of response to a particular stimulus. So some event is going to have uh, some event, uh, you know, you are going to encounter or you have encountered some event and you feel like, you know, I will not be able to handle it or, you know, it, will, it, it kinds of you perceive it as I have already discussed. Stress has a lot of subjective perception uh, in a sense that, you know, people, <coughs> uh, people, you know, interpretation plays a lot of role. So if you think I will not be able to handle a situation, stress is a natural outcome of that. So mostly it happens in, in response to a particular situation or particular stimulus, you know, you face a situation and you feel, you know, uh, it will going to you know, create pressure and I will not be able to handle everything about it. So stress is a natural outcome. Anxiety is more about future oriented uh, response. So certain apprehension is there, what will happen, you no know, sense of worriness. Uh, so if you, but if you see symptom wise, both stress and anxiety, you know, will look very similar in terms of physiological response. It is very difficult to differentiate. Uh, but anxiety uh, may not always happen in, in, in response to particular very specific stimuli. Sometimes anxiety can be very free flowing, you know. Some people have generalized anxiety. They're simply anxious most of the time. Uh, some people may have specific anxiety such as, you know, social anxiety. So some people are afraid of going into too much of crowded places. So like that, you know, um, anxiety is mostly sometimes it can be very free floating, uh, but mostly it is about apprehension about something that is going to happen. Uh, but stress is mostly in response to certain stimulus, you know. But physiological response are very similar. Sometimes it is difficult to distinguish them. I hope this will uh, clear your doubt. Amrita, uh, she, uh, Amrita. Uh, so she writing, sir, can you explain what is the difference between chronic stress and anxiety? So as I already discussed, you know, stress, uh, chronic stress, when you say when the stress is for a long time, you know, so there are typically two types of stress. One is acute stress, one is chronic stress. So in acute stress, mostly, it, uh, you know, you experience it for a very short duration of time, you know. Let's say you have exam. So before exam, you are stressed about it. Uh, how will I perform and something like that. Once the exam is over, it is gone. 
so these are called chronic stress when uh, so sorry these are called acute stress short term chronic stress is a you know, long term stress you know when you are experiencing stress for months you know sometimes it could be years so so you know so for a long time you are experiencing stress it is not going out of out of your life you know for example poverty it could be chronic stress some people are not able to you know manage their livelihood day to day you know whatever things are required they are not able to arise though so it is a constant background stress going on may it may be for years months and so like that, you know another example is uh, you know uh, you know living with a partner who is very abusive or somehow you don't you know there are a lot of conflicts in the relationship uh, so you have to live with that person where a lot lot of conflicts are there no so there, there, there is a, on a everyday basis there will be you know stress experiences for a long time you know so those are called as chronic stress uh, so and i have already discussed this chronic stress are most dangerous kind of stress you know and they are responsible for all the negative impact particularly all the physical diseases and mental problems that comes up primarily because of this chronic stress acute stress are not a problem because you know it comes and goes and it is okay we all face that but chronic stress if you are experiencing they may lead to a lot of issues and problems in your life particularly it may hamper your physical diseases you know a lot of so if you see this module 3 uh, it is about how stress leads to various kinds of diseases you know i have discussed on elaborately how it impacts your physical health and mental health Aryan writes how can how we can take this credits to use and is there other courses added to it later on from NPTEL and if any books recommended for learning techniques uh credit uh, so there is no fixed credit as such but i think uh, different institute have certain uh, you know accepted criteria where at some institutes you know they give 3 credits 4 credits for 30 hours lecture Uh, i think iit roorkee has started uh, giving uh, credits to nptel co courses so it depends on your host institute uh, so but for 30 hour lecture three four credits can be given uh, but uh, you know it depends on your institute what is their approach there are uh, any other courses added to it no as of now there is no added courses any no other courses connected to this course as such books recommendation if you see the pages you know page of my course you know there are certain some books are given and i am also giving you lecture handouts certain reference material references are also given from where this material is taken you can uh, check those references and find out from the using you know search in the googles and find find out i cannot directly give you you know certain journal articles and those thing because there are copyright issues uh, but i can give you references Uh, all the lecture handouts will have references and they are if you want to learn and read more about certain things you can uh, <clears throat> use uh, those references and find out more material and read about it and certain standard textbooks are already given in the course content you just look in the into the page introduction page of this on of this uh, particular course some books are uh, you know uh, mentioned there so you will find a uh, lot of ideas about this content of this course in in those books but you may not find everything so therefore that is why lecture notes are given additional references are also given musical mocktail again uh, i think he is asking how do antidepressant drug work against stress please explain sir so antidepressant drugs are not given for stress because if you see the name itself is antidepressant no this is given only for the patients of depression that to not all depression clinical cases of depression you know depression can be very you know severe and mild and those kind of thing you know so sometimes some depression has biological reasons genetic reason you know in those cases uh, psychiatrists sometimes provide antidepressant drugs uh, to balance certain neurochemicals so it is not given just for stress it is only given in cases of severe depression not all cases <clears throat>
stress itself is not a disease so try to understand this you know stress is not a problem or a disease you know we all experience stress there is no problem in it see it don't think it is a kind of disease or problem you know depression is a disorder stress is not a disorder stress is an everyday phenomenon we all experience only thing is that we need to handle it we need to learn how to deal with it cope with it and especially avoid chronic stress because that may hamper your mind and body in a long in in the long run so that is the idea so don't think stress is a disorder and no you need medication and those that is not the idea so vijita says what would be the pattern of the main exam main exam will be multiple choice question 3 hours time and there will be multiple choice questions that you need to answer <coughs> Arjit says, "Where to learn counseling psychology? Counseling psychology, obviously, many universities have a master's program in counseling psychology. Uh, so there is a difference between counseling psychology and clinical psychology. Counseling psychology is mostly about more about you know uh, they are more uh, dealing with more general day-to-day phenomena and people with mild issues and those kind of things." clinical psychologist um, they can deal with you know disordered people you know people with psychological disorder assessment and treatment and psychotherapies those things are more exhaustively addressed by clinical psychology because their program is more elaborate more exhaustive counseling psychology is more about you know uh, mostly you know nor- normal people you know certain issues in life and those kind of thing are addressed by counseling psychologist and uh, counseling psychologists may deal with career issues it is not just about psychological disorders you know they may counsel about your career issues you know personal life issues so many things you know uh, so many universities provide uh, you know counseling psychology as a uh, masters program you can do that and uh, become a counselor uh, many universities you can just find out some of them clinical psychology is obviously you know very very specific institute actually you know train you for you know that professional kind of clinical psychology practitioner clinical psychology practitioner we have very limited institutes such as nimhan cip rachi uh, and um, a few institutes are there counseling psychology will find many universities you know. uh, most of the universities which are having uh, psychology in their program probably uh, they will have counseling uh, psychology in their masters program <clears throat> tourism class somebody uh, so she says sir why stress has been dubbed as an epidemic and why not pandemic because like a pandemic stress is irritant so they are in the lecture probably i have used the word it is a kind of global epidemic which means pandemic same thing because it is common human experience everywhere it is there so we can use the word pandemic also no problem himanshu gupta writes behavioral versus cognitive psychologist what is your question main focus psychology studies both cognitive aspect cognitive means mental processing part behavioral means action oriented part so earlier there were separate schools of psychologists you know one school is to call them as behaviorist other people is to call them as a cognitive psychologist nowadays it is it you know we don't no longer use such specific demarcations so people who study psychology you know they also look into both you know behavior as well as cognitive aspect also because it is the mind that influences your behavior so these are not separate things but earlier there was one specific school called behaviorist their idea was that we should not study mind because it is not observable we should only study observable actions so they used to call them as behaviorist or radical behaviorist you know so nowadays we don't have those kind of things uh shilpa says for phd can you do ms psychology in counseling and then pursue or is it clinical psychology mandatory phd in what i mean phd with having must 
you know with a master degree in psychology in any specialization you can do phd it is better that you continue with those specific specialization in the phd also phd because it is a more research research no there you don't read too much there is there will be course work for one or two semester and then you need to pursue research you need to select a topic you know and then you need to collect data analyze data and produce a thesis so it is very specific problem oriented thing uh, so it is uh, so um, if you have masters degree in uh, psychology you can do phd in psychology you can change certain areas also uh, that is not an issue uh lilak blue is writing what psychotherapies would would you consider most effective for stress related issues so there are different psychotherapies or orientations are there uh, so they have every 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 uh, psychotherapies has their own orientation and all has their benefits so it depends on the person also uh, sometimes some people will get benefited by certain approaches other people will get benefited by other approaches and also for example cognitive therapies are very popular so in cognitive therapies uh, people uh, the therapies generally focus on changing one's beliefs and ideas about things whatever it is you know because as we have already discussed you know stress is largely an outcome of your interpretation process how you think and believe about certain things and things and situations of your life so many times we have many you know irrational beliefs we have certain you know so in coping section there will be whole lecture on mental ways of coping there we'll discuss about it in more detail and you can you know uh, please uh, you know go to that lecture so uh, there is a whole idea of irrational beliefs you know for example people have beliefs like that they should get love and affection from people around them all the time you know even though you may not say it but somehow unconsciously we accept that you no know? people around them should always give you a respect and love and affection which may not work because people have their own ideas about life and their mood may change and you know, they may behave very differently also so if you have those kind of beliefs and ideas you are bound to get lot of you know stressful and emotional problems so there are you know in in the detail because i cannot address this whole question now because it needs to i need to address lot of things so there is a lecture on mental ways of coping please go to that so that will address some of the cognitive therapies how they deal with and it is one of the most effective in terms of dealing with stress and emotional problems then there are other ways such as you know meditations you know uh, more than uh, body oriented exercises such as relaxation exercises all these are helpful so there are different ways and levels of addressing issue so different psychotherapists can address all these issues in a different at the multiple levels so we'll uh, you know as we proceed in this course you will see all these things will be discussed sir could a student of art discipline study psychology you know i mean psychology itself i mean uh, most of the many universities in india at least it is put into social sciences um so obviously you know you can go there because the demarcation of arts and social sciences it is not very you know clear in uh, when we say arts generally social sciences and arts are combined together in most of the universities so if you are a student of arts you can take it in abroad some universities you know they keep psychology as a science um, but in india mostly you know in social sciences also in india mostly you will find it in the in the discipline of arts and social sciences some aspect of psychology are from the you know they are related to pure sciences particularly biological sciences you know so psychology has some pure science aspect also such as you know biological psychology uh, so those aspects may be more related to science but many other aspects are related to social sciences himanshu gupta says what's on behavioral theory what do you want to know about it
So Watson behavioral theory is one of, because as I have already said, you know, this was one of the schools of thoughts in the early uh, in 1930s. Behaviorism, Watson was the main proponent of this school. So their idea was that, you know, we should study only behavior. Behavior means observable actions, that actions that we can observe. We should not study mind because mind is not observable. Uh, so that was popular for a few uh, few years uh, because they were focusing too much on scientific scientific discipline and uh, they were denying that we should not study mind because it is not directly observable. Then obviously cognitive psychology and other discipline came where they said you know, you know mind can also be studied even though it may not be observed but its impact can be studied. For example, you can you know, measure performance, mental performances, such as memory performance using certain tasks. So then obviously behaviorism faded, you know, and popularity will decrease. And nowadays you will not find anybody who is calling them as pure behaviorist or something like that. So Madhuri, uh, sir, could a student of Arjun, what is the pattern of exam will be? So exam, I have already said, it will be multiple choice question only. Uh, Pavitra says, good evening, sir. First of all, I am very happy to be part of this course and I thank Swayam for providing this opportunity. Thank you, Pavitra, that I'm happy that you found this course useful. Suman says, sir, can you circulate the session notes on the first day of the module itself? Thanks. Uh, generally, I'm giving it first or by second day it will be there. So don't worry about that. And also, I mean, uh, IIT Madras is working on the lecture script. So full script of the lecture will also be posted, but it may take some time. So whole lecture will be kind of scripted and, you know, and it will be uploaded in the PDF format. Okay. Pavitra again says, Sir, I can easily understand the way you are carrying on the entire session, sir, and being a common audience, I can able to understand easily. Thank you for your great support. Thank you, Pavitra. I'm happy that you understood the content. Arijit says, Can we say distress leads to anxiety? Then comes depression. See, this uh, depression, anxiety, uh, they many times may be co-occur together also. When you are highly stressed, sometimes you know, anxiety also may follow. Stress may also lead to sometimes depression. Yeah. So these three can be, you know, fear also sometimes be associated with the stress. So these emotions are very, sometimes very closely connected to each other and one may follow other also. It is possible. Anirudh says, sir, how far psychology helps understand human behavior and mental health? Psychology is about human behavior and mental health. You know, this whole course and all the aspect, all the other disciplines of psychology, other sub discipline they are only talking about mental aspects and behavioral aspects only. From different angles, uh, the people, uh, the, you know, different sub disciplines are trying to address uh, the different aspects of behavior and mental health. Health. Mental health, mostly clinical psychologists start talking about it and nowadays positive psychology is also talking about mental health. This course also deals with mental health, you know, a large, large aspect of this course is about mental health. So upcoming modules you will find a lot of discussion on mental health also in this course itself. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Madhu Mita says, sir, can I become accounts and finance students study psychology? I mean, um, probably you can, uh, but again, you know, different universities and institutes and colleges have their own eligibility criteria. So you need to find out. I cannot really answer this question. Mm. So whether they allow it or not, because every institute has their own rules. <clears throat> Shivangi Sharma is writing, I have done graduation in sociology, now I think in pursuing psychology. What are the things I should be more cautious of while beginning this discipline? Um, 
so one thing is obviously if you are planning to shift it you need to find out whether it is allowed in your institute whatever institute you are saying it studying it and obviously if you understand and uh, you know have some basic ideas about psychology because master level obviously you will start you will not start with you know abc of a subject no it, they will start at certain levels so you should be also clear that whether you will be able to read at that level uh, it is not difficult it can be done but provided you also has certain understanding and back, you know background uh, reading and studying about psychology also so if you keep reading and uh, you know you have some understanding about it you can do it in the master discipline masters also but first you find out whether you know um, it is allowed in the institute that you are studying if you are planning to continue in that institute or not if it is allowed i think you can change it uh, then you can start reading some of the introductory books about psychology and get some orientation about it and take some courses like that <clears throat> irfan shah say just wanted to say thank you sir i have watched lectures of first week and surely i'll benefit from the like future lectures thank you irfan i am happy that it is uh, helping you shivangi sharma is writing again is there any source in which help us prepare ms psychology entrances uh, most of the ms psychology entrances will have graduation level you know uh, courses or syllabus so so i mean uh, you can you know read some of the ba ba level books uh, that will help you to prepare you know? so most of some of the ba level questions will be asked in the entrance test so introduction to psychology those kind of thing introduction to social psychology so those kind of books uh, you can find out and read them and that will be i think good enough divya paul paul is writing is mindfulness helpful in controlling stress uh, yes divya mindfulness is very helpful and uh, uh, in this course itself uh, i will have one one hour lecture on mindfulness so i think uh, that will be in the upcoming module uh, please uh, listen to that lecture yeah, all things will be clear so we'll have we have one full lecture one hour lecture on mindfulness itself only so that will be helpful for you prem avat vatan sundar is asking thank you for your explanation sir thank you prem akash is writing sir uh, which have more scope organizer psychology or clinical psychology uh, both have their uh, you know scopes so but their scopes are in the different areas organizational psychology if you read uh, you will have uh, probably more likely to get placed in let's say because mba courses also has organizational behavior as one part so if you do uh, organizational behavior probably you can uh, work as a uh, <clears throat> lecturer or you know as a teaching staff in the mba colleges also uh, in the hr in the corporate sector you can become a hr kind of job you can take uh, so like that it will be more uh, oriented towards organization uh, you know uh, uh, and those kind of the clinical psychology is more oriented towards you know diagnosis treatment and disorder so you can practice as a clinical psychologist or you can become a kind of <clears throat> you know you can also pursue academic career also so academic career is common to both uh, beyond that organizational behavior you can uh, pursue hr and those kind of jobs clinical psychology you can practice yourself also although in india uh, now things are you know changing and uh, these professions are also you know becoming more lucrative and demand is also increasing in west already a lot of demand is there you know clinical psychology has a lot of demands but in india it is not that much but nowadays it is increasing uh suman is writing thank you full lecture in pdf will be nice suman uh, full lecture in pdf will be coming uh, iit madras is working on that once that will come uh, we'll upload it in the uh, portal ujjal gupta sir is excessive overthinking may also lead to depression 
see thinking uh, overthinking uh, may not lead to depression or anything but you know it depends on what you are thinking you know depression is more about you know uh, losing interest and sadness those kind of thing and there are different grades of depression you know some people are clinically depressed and some people are kind of sad and not really clinically depressed so it depends on what you are thinking if you are most of the thoughts content of depressive people may be you know about negative thoughts and you know loss of interest in life so content of thought is more important uh, rather than overthinking itself overthinking may make you little bit agitated and uh, you know tense and those kind of thing uh, but not necessarily lead to depression mm -hmm. Uh, Irfan Shah is asking, sir, just want to know, can anxiety, particularly social anxiety, be overdone at any age? Uh, obviously, any kind of psychological issues you can always overcome, obviously. Uh, sometimes you may need uh, professional help. So, some counselors or clinical psychologists may help you out. Some psychiatrists sometimes also, uh, support of psychiatrists also needed. Sometimes on your own also you can come out. If you realize there is an issue, there is a problem and... Uh, you just try to observe it, try to face it, uh, try to you know learn how I can uh, go out of it. And most important is you need to face it. You no, know? mostly let's say if you have social anxiety, you always try to avoid social situation and uh, just to avoid that anxiety. The more you avoid, it will remain there. You know, but if you face it slowly, slowly, learn and you know slowly, slowly you try to face your fears. Slowly, slowly you will be able to overcome them. So facing and you know. Encountering them is more important, but if you keep running away and avoiding it, it will remain there inside you and you will not be able to overcome them. Uh, so sometimes you need support of other people like professionals, sometimes you can do it on your own also. It is not necessary all the time you have to need. But obviously if your uh, social anxiety level is very high for, for somebody, then it is always good to uh, seek help first. Uh, they may give you certain ideas and techniques that may be helpful. Uh, musical mocktail, I think he's writing. Thanks for the lecture and the notes, sir. Loving the concepts, and then at the end, it reminds me to stay calm because if stress, we get uh, coronary heart disease. Okay, yeah, I think his name is Arun. Okay, thank you, Arun. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the idea is to manage stress. I mean, you cannot avoid it, it is okay. We all face stress on a daily basis. You don't have to fight it and you know, kind of label it as a kind of devil or something. It is okay. I mean, it's a part of human experience. But chronic stress, we need to avoid it. If for some reason you are experiencing stress for months and years, then it will be really problem. And we need, we need to kind of address them very seriously. That is the main uh, idea and the message of this course. Then all the physical disorders and heart diseases and all these problems may come up. Obviously, there are other reasons to heart disease, but this is one of the main reasons. Shruti is writing, good evening, sir. I am an MSc psychology student and this course is very useful for me and the presentation style is very good and can follow easily. Thank, thank you, Shruti. Uh, I'm happy that it is you are able to follow the content. Shivangi is saying, thank you, sir. I have got my answer. The lecture by you are great. Thank you, Shivangi. Jyoti is writing, sir, exam will be how many marks? Uh, I think 100 marks. 100 marks. Jyoti is again writing, uh, sir, you didn't answer, but please help me. Whom should we contact if we get weekly online course? Uh, it will be uploaded. Uh, there are TAs and uh, no weekly online all the course material will be uploaded. Only thing is that this lecture transcript, full lecture transcript, it is taking time because, you know, it is dealt by some third party vendors and once they are done with it, only then it can, can be uploaded. But lecture notes, I immediately, first or second day, I will be uploading. Uh, Ron Rohini is asking, sir, how can we differentiate ignorance and depression? And these are two different things. I mean, depression is more like about um, a pattern of thinking which may lead to disorder. 
ignorance if you are not aware of something or if you if you don't know something then it is an ignorance you know lack of awareness is ignorance so these are two different things i mean in what context you are asking you know, probably i'm not getting it but ignorance is lack of awareness no i don't know something or i'm not aware of something then you are ignorant about that aspect depression is very different thing no it is about you know certain cluster of symptom loss of interest and you know uh, sadness and those kind of thing tourism class uh, is writing sir on what basis can we say a person is clinically depressed or not merely depressed uh, there uh, this is uh, you cannot um, a layman cannot actually uh, label it or kind of diagnose it some professional there are certain standardized tools to make you know make that but the idea is if you are clinically depressed obviously you know the intensity will be very high and it will be very difficult to come out on your own sometimes we need medication for in the, on those cases so as a layman uh, you cannot really you know label it whether it is kind of mild depression you can understand i mean many times we all experience depression you know basically it is not depression it is more like sadness you know so sometimes once in a day or maybe once in a week or sometimes we feel depressed or sad for some reason don't then these are not like you know clinically depression on those kind of thing we all experience that clinical depression is something that when people become is very difficult to come out of it and the intensity may be very high in those cases obviously we need treatment can the prometric test conducted online in future prometric test sorry i don't know what you are asking about this Mm. Fred is asking, uh, sir, does stress make you bad dreams? Um, possible uh, because you know dreams are kind of reflection of your day-to-day -day activities. You know, uh, so sometimes what we do in a day, some uh, so those are kind of manifested in dream also sometimes. So if you are highly stressed, probably some of these stressful experiences may translate into certain dream contacts. Possible, because all, all experiences of our life can get translated or kind of, uh, they may influence the content of dreams. Sometimes, you know, so dream is a very, again, complex issue, probably. But obviously our daily experiences, including stressful experience, can influence certain content. Uh, sir, how can we overcome exomophobia? Mm. So I, I think you are asking about you have phobia about exam. One simple solution is you read more, prepare yourself. As I've already said, you know, stress is about when we when we interpret that you are not able to handle something, then stress is the outcome. So if you prepare well, uh, your stress will be less. Even then there are some some physiological uh, you know nervousness and those things is okay but you know i can handle this situation beyond that uh, if you have anxiety and other issues uh, some of the lecture content will be helpful and uh, if it is very high intensity and you are not able to help yourself probably you can take some help of professionals also uh, but the thing is for uh, fear about something or stress about something one thing is that you prepare yourself if you are fully prepared, then automatically uh, the stress will go down. <clears throat> so, thank you. Ved is asking how to handle overthinking stress. So, overthinking basically, you are asking your mind is running and you know, too much of thought processes. Um, so one thing can uh, one very simple thing that can help you is obviously you know doing uh, certain meditation techniques the relaxation techniques those things uh, will be covered in upcoming lectures so there will be one lecture on meditation mindfulness there will be one lecture on relaxation exercises these are very helpful in terms of calming the mind when you are overthinking and too much of exaggerated thoughts processes are going on uh, it is very difficult sometimes to uh, directly handle them but then certain techniques such as you know certain meditative techniques mindfulness techniques some relaxation exercises uh, they may help you out 
in terms of decreasing those overthinking and calming down so some of this lecture upcoming lectures will be on this uh, please uh, watch them and it will be helpful <coughs> okay i think it is almost one hour Some of you have asked, uh, you know, in the um, uh, in the Google sheet, some of the personal problems, uh, such as, you know, uh, EVS Shushma wrote, a relative of mine was suffering from illness and a couple of months ago. Uh, because of that, she developed anxiety and stress. Uh, uh, now she is healthy, but tends to think that she is still ill. As due to this, uh, she tends to think that uh, she does not have energy in her body. Like while walking at home, she takes the help of walls to walk without which she thinks might fall down. What is the solution? Uh, so this kind of question, obviously, I cannot address it here because, you know, I don't know what is the actual reason and situation that your relative is facing. Uh, without knowing all these things, I cannot answer. Uh, but try to find out why she thinks that you know still she is ill is there any real reason or it is just uh, she is thinking about it but if she feels she is weak there must be some reason try to find out and if it is not well valid reason then try to argue and rationally try to convince her so this could be one way you can you know, deal with it but i cannot give you kind of generalized suggestion here because i don't know the actual situation Uh, Kolarth Madhu uh, is asking, sir, is there any course which help you to become psychiatrist after completing masters in psychology? Uh, Kolarth, uh, psychiatrist is a very different profession, you know. Now you should understand the difference between clinical psychologist and a psychiatrist. Psychiatrists are people who are from the medical background. So they do MBBS. And after doing MBBS in the MD program, they specialize in psychological disorders and treatment so psychiatrists are people who are trained in the medical profession so they are the only people who can give you drugs such as antidepressant and other thing you know because they are trained in the medicine and uh, the medical profession clinical psychologists are, are people from the psychological background no they are basically uh, from the background of psychology and then they train themselves in, 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 the, in the diagnosis and treatment of psychological disorder but they cannot give you medicine because medicine is only from the medical psychiatrist can give you because they are on the medical background so this is the difference Psycho clinical psychologists can give you some psychotherapies like you know talking to people giving them solutions giving them techniques and those kind of things psychiatrists can give you medic medicines so mostly uh, psychiatrist uh, people should go to a psychiatrist when there are really serious clinical issues that you need medication for that clinical psychologist you know uh, mostly can help you out to using barbell therapies and those kind of things so there, this is the difference you know <clears throat> So I think we are almost done, uh, no more questions and almost one hour is almost over. So thank you all for joining in the live discussion and having such interesting questions. So we'll have, uh, within a month, we'll have one more live discussion and please go through the lectures. I know the lectures are a little lengthy, one hour, it is also difficult for most of you, but you can speed, you know, increase the speed of the lecture in here because a lot of these things will be clear if when you hear the lecture lecture notes are fine but you know without really understanding and going through the explanation many of you may not understand what is the content here so just don't depend on the lecture notes 
lecture notes are fine for reading for exam and those things but if you want to understand in detail please go through the lecture a lot of things will be helpful uh, where is asking any reference book uh, please uh, go to the course content and there will be few reference book on that you can uh, take help uh, but you may not find everything in those books so therefore these lecture notes are given references are also given you can always study them okay so thank you so see you in the next live session and uh, whatever queries you have we will try to address those thank you